Gray County. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit Rogers.com for more details. Close up. I'm your host, Sharon Skelly, and today's guest is Karen Baratinsky. And Karen is the manager of the Ontario Federation of Snowmobile Clubs. Is that right? That's correct for District 9. District 9. And District 9 covers what area, Karen? It covers uh, all of the snowmobile trails and all of the volunteer based clubs in the counties of Grey Bruce and the northern parts of Perth, Huron, and Wellington counties. Oh, so we go from Tobermory down to Godrich, across to Fergus, up to Thornbury and everything in the middle. That's a big area to cover. It is. A lot of snowmobiling. And when I talked to you to book this show, we had about three or four feet of snow. Mm -hmm. And now we have a flood warning and there's yes. no snow. So that tells you what weather's like in Gray and Bruce or really in Ontario. Snow one day, rain the next. But that doesn't mean that we won't have snow next weekend. But when we did talk, we did have a lot of snow, but there were the trails weren't open. So it goes to tell you that just because you have snow doesn't mean you should jump on your snowmobile and go out on the trails. Am I correct? That's absolutely correct, Sharon. Um, there's still a lot of work to be done. And to be honest, uh, we are actually not too disappointed that the snow went away. When all of that snow fell, it was on unfrozen ground, which does not help us make a good base for snowmobiling. So the fact that it's gone and we're going to get some nice cold temperatures before it comes back is actually a good thing for the sport. Oh, I did not know that. So you have what what's the process of grooming the trails to make to prepare it for snowmobile season? Well, even before the groomers go out, there's a lot of work. Our club volunteers actually work all year round. They speak to landowners, they get permission to use their property. Uh, once they have permission, there's they do things like um, bridge redecking, they may put culverts in, they may have to clear some brush. Um, all of that goes on in the fall of the year, and then they start putting stakes and signs in the ground so riders know where to go. After that, we need some ground freeze, we need some snow, and once that happens, then the groomers can start to roll, and they start to build what we call a base. And that is flattening the snow, packing it down so when the snowmobilers ride on it, it, it will stay hopefully flat or as flat as, as we can make it. And, and it protects the land underneath. So it's quite a process. It's, it's very much more than we get a few flakes on the ground and we're good to go. Right. But I think some people don't understand that. And they just hop on their snowmobiles and say, oh, wow, you know, we've got some snow, let's go. And it can actually damage the ground underneath the trails. Absolutely. It, it can be hazardous for the riders and it can damage the ground underneath, which then, you know, often will result in trail loss. Right. Uh, when you say trail loss, what do you mean by that? Well, again, um, like I, I started off with the first part of this process that we have to do is get permission from people to use their land. And the majority of trails, especially in District 9, are on private property. And, and the community-minded folks that own that property allow us to do it uh, for the economic impact it brings, for the recreation, all of that good stuff. Um, but understanding if a trail is built properly, it will not hurt the land below it. If people go out and ride prior to that, it could do damage. And it is up to those individuals every single year to allow us to use their land or not. And if there is damage, they're, they're much less likely to allow us to use it the following year. That's right, because um, a lot of it is farmland. Absolutely. Um, I mean, if you're, if you're snowmobiling on a, a trail that isn't prepared, you could damage what could be a crop. 
Yes, yes, exactly. And if you look, when, when we start to have a meltdown in the spring, if you're taking a drive around the area and you look across some of those farmers' fields, you will often see the entire field is bare. There's no snow, but there might be some stakes and signs, and there is still a path going through it. And it just shows how thick and protective that base is to the land below. Mm -hmm. And really fortunately, important. if people have followed the rules, then there's no damage at all. And That's then right. people can enjoy that particular trail again next year. Absolutely. But if, but if a few have just not listened, not paid attention, you won't be able to. And That's that right. farmer will have sustained some financial loss. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Which is not something we ever want to do to those no. those people that that really are the backbone of our sport. That's right. So we've we've covered how we get the trails. A lot of them are don't like don't the trail are not donated, but they're uh, sort of uh, what's the word? Not well. Legal. They volunteer to allow us to use their land to build them. That's yeah, right. that's right. So you now you have volunteers actually maintain these trails that's correct the volunteers are the ones that go out and they do all the brushing and the bridge building and put every single one of those stakes and signs in the ground by hand uh, in the fall of the year and then take them all out again in the spring so it's it's a huge community effort to to put snowmobile trails in place and maintain them throughout the season and the the actual groomers who are they are they volunteers uh, no, groomers and uh, groomer operators in District 9 are paid employees. Uh, many of them are our club members, so they understand what it takes to build and maintain a trail. Um, so they are employees of District 9 and uh, and the people that, that build the trail, that actually put the trail on the ground are volunteers. Now, you obviously need money to sustain your, your federation. Um, you do that with memberships? We do that through the use of, or sorry, through the sale of snowmobile trail permits. So oh. snowmobile trail permits are sold. Uh, they are all online and they're sold by the MTO. And then the money from the sale of those snowmobile trail permits goes back to the districts and the clubs. And that is what we use to fund the building, uh, grooming and maintenance of the trail system. So do you have memberships too? Some of the clubs have memberships, uh, and the club memberships tend to be that core group of volunteers that, oh. that go out and, and, and do all of the work. So, so they are far fewer than the permit buyers, but every single one of them is important. The, the volunteers that, uh, that spend the you know, tens and tens of hundreds of hours every year are important. The permit buyers that purchase a snowmobile trail permit to fund the system are also very important. It, it's all a, a, a puzzle. We need every single piece to make it work. A permit is good for just your district or is it good for the whole province? It's good for the whole province. Okay. So if you purchase a snowmobile trip, if you purchase a snowmobile trail um, permit, you can ride any available trail in the province of Ontario. Oh, okay. And is a permit good for a family or just a snowmobile? It's for a snowmobile. You okay. purchase a permit to put on your, your snowmobile. Okay. Um, Are they expensive? I don't think so, given what you get out of this sport. No, no I, I just wondered, um, like compared to a membership, is it kind of equitable? Um, if you compare it to something like a, a an annual golf membership or a ski pass, oh, okay, it, you know it's significantly less, and we do oh. offer discounts for early season buy. Oh. So right now, if you haven't That's bought good. a permit yet and you want to go snowmobiling, um, you're purchasing at the highest price. It's two hundred and eighty dollars for the season. That's not very. Um, but if you take advantage of the early buy, if you buy before uh, November 1st, it's $200. If you buy after uh, November 1st, between November 1st and December 1st, it's $230. And now it's gone up to the full price of $280. But that's for the whole province. Absolutely. Absolutely. And any day you want to go. <laughs> yeah, that, that actually is not very much. And, and considering it, it helps to maintain 
the trails and and do all of that i mean that's really and insurance probably it covers yes. insurance and all yes. the technical things that you need to run a an operation like the the snowmobile trails so Absolutely. that's really that's really a good buy and, and it's significant there's just under 30,000 kilometers of trail in the province of ontario and 2800 of those are in district 9 wow that is a lot um Wow. So um, you snowmobile, I imagine, or family snowmobiles. Uh, yes, we do. Yeah. Um, so do you have any, um, is there anywhere where a snowmobiler can go to get all of this information about, you know, the trail system, um, you know, the rules of the trails? Where would they go to get that? Absolutely. They can either visit our District 9 website, which is www.district9.on.ca, or they can go to the OFSC website, which is www.ofsc.on.ca. And that will give you information on when it's safe to travel on the trails and which one part, because it won't be safe everywhere at the same time. It'll be good to travel, say, uh, in Kenora uh, before it is in, say, Fergus or vice versa, who knows, but that's they'll correct. tell you where and when. Yes, that's correct. Absolutely. If anybody is looking for trail status to find out when trails are available and when they are allowed to ride, um, they need to go to that OFSC website, again, www.ofsc.on.ca, click on something called the Interactive Trail Guide. That will bring up a picture oral view of all of the trails in the province um, and they're color coded to show what is available to ride. They can also, if they don't want to go to a website, we have an app. It's called the Ghost Snowmobiling app and riders can download that from either the Apple Store or the Google Play Store, depending on what kind of a device they have. And that exact same graphical uh, map depiction shows there. Wow. Technology. That's great. Technology. And those trails are changed real time. So when a trail becomes available, the process in District 9 and in most districts is the, the clubs, the club president or whoever they designate will call my office and we will make those changes. And those changes appear on those graphical depictions within about 10 minutes after I Wow. So it, it's, it's really up to the minute. Now, if I wanted to go on a snowmobile tri a trip and I'm not familiar with um, the restaurants that are around that particular place, is there somewhere on the website, does it tell you, you know, things like, where can I get gas? Where can I? Absolutely. Where? Absolutely. You can get that information from a number of places. Uh, District 9, like uh, most of the districts, uh, produce an actual a printed trail guide that uh, that riders can go and take a look at and, and plan their trip around those things. You can either though go to um, the either that you can go to our district nine website as well as a number of the other districts to find that information. We highlight all of our sponsors and snowmobile friendly businesses there, um, as well as the uh, the spots to find out trail status so the OFSC website or the app we have points of interest on those and those points of interest uh, highlight the snowmobile friendly places where you can get fuel you can stop to eat you can stay overnight uh, dealers or service stations that you may need along the way and it really does help people trip plan <laughs> This is all wonderful. And, and so really your website is a wealth of information for people that are going on a trip that tells you about everything you need to know uh, when you're planning a snowmobile trip. Right. Now that we've got that covered, how about snowmobile safety? Because, you know, there's more to get going snowmobiling than just jumping on your snowmobile and you should wear a helmet and right. just getting on your snowmobile. You really have to do, you have to make sure your snowmobile's in good working order. Mm -hmm. There's things you need to take with you on a snowmobile trip. Even if you're going out in a, you know, outside of town, you still need to be prepared. And there's things you need to do to be safe. So 
where do you go to find all that information or are there courses you can take? Uh, there is a course offered. There's an online course offered. It is primarily um, individuals between the ages of 12 and 16 that take it because they can obtain a motorized snow vehicle license, uh, allowing them to, to uh, operate a snowmobile. But it is available to anyone. So any new riders, we also encourage them to take it. There's a wealth of information there. There is a lot of information on the OFSC website as well about safety. Um, what we encourage everybody to do, Sharon, is just take it back to this one simple statement is make smart choices. Okay, you're, you're participating in a recreational activity that is outside in the winter. So if everybody just makes smart choices around that, um, it's a really, really enjoyable, enjoyable time. So again, some of those smart choices are waiting for the trails to become available before you go riding. Once they are available and you do go riding, stay on the marked trail. Don't decide to leave that marked trail and go play in the side field. The safest place to ride is between those stakes. Uh, you also talked about gear. So you need helmet, you need, you need, um, you know, there's some great tech right now in snowmobile suits and mitts and boots to, to keep you warm. Make sure your machine is in good running uh, condition. We have speed limits. The speed limit on the trail is, is 50 kilometers an hour. And that is also, though, very much like the roads. You know, the the um, the speed limit on the road when we were, you know, going through the, the weather events we had a few days ago was 80. But I know I did a little bit of driving once the roads reopened and I wasn't going 80. That's the right. trails are the same, right? So you want to ride according to the conditions. You may want to go a little bit slower at night. So you don't outrun your headlights. And then just some other things like um, ride with a partner. If you're meeting up to ride with somebody and you do have to ride a, a, a piece of your trip alone, make sure people know where you're going. Make sure they know when you intend on, on arriving and check in with them. Just and those little... No alcohol drugs while you're... Dr um, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Zero, zero tolerance for, for alcohol. Right. And do you, you need a license to operate a snowmobile? You need either a valid Ontario driver's license or a motorized snow vehicle license. Okay. Right. And does your snowmobile need to be registered somewhere? Yes, yes, it does. You have to go, and uh, we didn't escape the, uh, the the sticker fee this year with automobiles. Like so you still do, do still have to pay for your your snowmobile registration sticker, but that's fifteen dollars a year. It's it's okay. not significant. All right, so those are those are things that um, are really important to know and that everybody should remember because it is a sport, it is recreation, but it's also dangerous if you don't do it safely. Yes, that, that's correct. It's about um, being prepared before you leave, making smart choices when you're out there and enjoying winter in our area. It's so beautiful. There are so many places in the winter that you can only see by snowmobile. And, um, you know, it's, it, it's great. It, it's a great thing to do with friends. It's a great thing to do with family. But make those smart choices and you'll have a fantastic time. That's right. Um, now, your uh, Ontario Federation of, what is it, snowmobile clubs, yes. do you um, do fundraisers? A number of the clubs do fundraisers, yes, because, again, as not-for-profit not corporations, the funding that we get to operate does not always meet the level of funds we need to operate. That's, you know, just the way everything is these days. So in order to augment that, a number of the clubs do fundraisers. Sometimes uh, those are in, in the form of events, uh, you know, club rides, poker runs, that type of thing. Um, sometimes they work with local businesses and those local businesses will, will sponsor some signage on their trail or they will sponsor maybe a piece of equipment to help them get some brushing or some bulldozing done. Um, 
you know, there's there's many, many ways that clubs fundraise to assist in augmenting the money they get from the sale. Does District 9 do any fundraising? Um, we do not fundraise per se as an activity. Uh, we do produce our snowmobile trail guide. That is our, our major fundraiser. Um, and that then promotes our trails. Um, it helps us raise a little bit of money to both produce that uh, that piece of collateral, um, as well as promote our snowmobile friendly businesses. And then those dollars go back in to help all of our clubs. And where is the snowmobile guide available? Uh, the snowmobile guide is available from any of our advertisers. So if you do go, go on our website and find our list of advertisers, you can go into any of the one of them and, and pick up a guide. Gray County also has the guides. And if that um, is not something that you're available to do, you can send an email to us. And that's info at ofscdistrict9.ca. And with your, your name and mailing address, we'll send one up to you. Okay. Now, you're the executive director. So that, does that mean that you're on a board? Yes. Uh, District 9 has a volunteer board of directors. Um, that basically operates the district and the district provides uh, umbrella support services for all of our clubs. So we assist them um, with kind of the business dealings, the business side of snowmobiling that, you know, let's say when you, you, you volunteer for your local snowmobile club, <laughs> you're not that quite that interested in, you know, you, you do it because you want to be outside and you want to be building trail. So um, our office and our board works with our clubs to make sure they're meeting all their corporate requirements, um, your insurance requirements, that type. Oh, so the clubs have, so there's District 9 and then there's the clubs. Yes, that's correct. What do the clubs do? The club's main responsibility is um, landowner relations, making, you know, having those discussions, building those relationships, making sure we have a place to put the trail and then building that trail. So whatever work needs to be done to the land to put that trail in place, that's what our clubs do. And in District 9, we have 26 member clubs. Oh, that, that I, build and maintain that 2,800 kilometers of trail every year. I see. I understand now. Um, so does every club have an executive too? Uh, they have a board. Yes. Every club is a not-for-profit corporation and they all have a board as well. And then do they have representatives at your level too? Yes. Yes. Every club is represented at our level. Oh, I see. So how did you get involved? What made you want to get involved at the at the district level? I, uh, I became involved many years ago. <laughs> and at that point in time, it, it was a, a part-time endeavor. I became involved in 2003. And uh, we've grown significantly since that time. And, uh, and it's, it's just a really great thing to be a part of the, the community minded people that are involved in our sport and are committed to, again, building and maintaining these trails and, and keeping relationships with our landowners, whether or not we get good snow, um, simply because of the love of the sport, they know what it brings to the area as far as economic benefit. It's just a really fantastic organization filled with wonderful people. Well, if someone's interested then in uh, kind of getting involved at the club level, mm -hmm. they would go on the website and find their club. Is that how it works? They can go to our District 9 website. All of the clubs are listed there. And some of the clubs have, have, um, have websites, uh, but the majority of them have Facebook pages. And there's links to every single one of those on our district webpage. Okay. And they can get in touch with them that way. And if, if that is something that's not working for them, again, they can touch base with me, uh, info at ofscdistrict9.ca, and we can point them to the right direction. And then they can sort of get involved at the club level and maybe, you know, take part in um, volunteer at the club or Absolutely. at least become a member. Absolutely. And support through a membership. 
and uh, help their club that way because if they're snowmobiling there, they could, you know, take part and get more active and uh, volunteer, do whatever at the club. And the, the face of our volunteer has changed significantly over the years where there used to be a large group of people and that was all they did all winter. Um, you know, life, uh, life is busy these days and everybody has a million other things to do. So we often find our volunteers now are going to the clubs and, and saying, I can't commit all winter, but I do have a weekend to come and help you with that bridge. I do have a couple days next week I can put, you know, help you put some stakes and signs in the ground. And that is all very welcome. Well, you know, we were always busy. I remember when I was younger, I was busy and I volunteered. Um, my husband volunteered when when uh, we were younger and we were always busy. So I'm sure people can find the time if they really are interested. And it shows their children that volunteerism is important to the community. And that's how things get done. Because if absolutely, volunteer, absolutely, things won't happen. And my, my children, before they could ride, always had to volunteer on the ground. <laughs> I mean, that's uh, in this show, I, I, everyone I speak to, um, every agency needs volunteers. I mean, that's how things get done. There's a few people that are paid positions, but the rest happens through the generosity of volunteers. Absolutely. Doing all sorts of things. It's not just, you know, the grunt work. It's doing everything from administration down to like board members down to, you know, serving meals to people. So Absolutely. To do. And it doesn't have to be every day or, or all your out, waking hours donating time. It's just helping out. And even in our, <laughs> our organization, although again, when the majority of people decide they want to volunteer for the snowmobile club, they think they're going to be outside. There are other things to do, like, you know, building and maintaining a web page. Yes, for the club, helping them look after some of those administrative tasks. That I only know letter, you know exactly, exactly. You know, there's always something we can find you to do uh, for Absolutely. you. Absolutely, that's what I always hear, and there is always something that they can find. Everybody has a strength, and, Absolutely. and it doesn't matter if you are, are physically able to do. Uh, if you think you're not physically able, they'll find something for you to do. It's just, do you want to? <clears throat> I have a cough. So, um, so just to wrap it up, you have a great website with tons of information on safety, on resources, on, you know, if you want to plan a trip, where you can go, um, how to donate, how to join, get a membership. And what's the other thing? Uh, uh, not a membership, but a, a permit. Uh, a, well, a permit, yeah, so you can get a permit there. So all you need to do is go to the website and everything is there at your fingertips. And uh, we'll, But we have to wait until they tell us that the trails are open. Not to go on till the trails are open. Don't be selfish. Wait until that and besides, there's no snow, so we won't be doing that. <laughs> but it won't be as tempting today. That's right. It'll be it'll be raining. Thank you very much, Karen, for joining us here on Community Close Up. And we'll have you on again when there's more snow and you can tell us how great it is out there on your snowmobile. That and sounds great. Join us again here on Community Close-Up. And remember, COVID's not over yet, so wear a mask and get your shots. And that's just my opinion, but stay safe. And join us again here on Rogers TV. Bye for now. Thanks, Karen. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. Tuesday on City TV. I'm Detective Charlie Hudson. Hume, you have a warrant. Yeah, right here. The bark oh. is 